Six million years ago, we branched off from the family tree we share with our ape cousins and monkey uncles. We may have evolved since then, but there's still a monkey in all of us. In this episode, we'll look at the laws of attraction. Are we all driven by a primal desire to attract a mate? Can the direct approach of our ape ancestors work in the urban jungle? You've got great legs. What time are they over? Using experiments and hidden camera stunts, we'll expose our cheesy chimp mating strategies. Do you know what time it is? Half past 12. And can you sniff out the mate of your dreams by decoding the subtle signals of your inner ape? You have very nice eyes, by the way. Oh, thanks. You do. So get ready to learn the laws of the jungle. Because like it or not, you're going ape. You have to spend only a few minutes in the company of apes to know how much they like a bit of the old monkey business. The need to find a mate drives a lot of animal behavior, including ours. But when it comes to romance, there is one vital difference between us and our ape cousins. Primates aren't bashful at all about sex. It's anytime, anywhere, in front of anyone. Humans are much more uptight. Watch this. This amorous ape couple are really actors. We've sent them to this crowded bar to see how onlookers respond when they turn up the heat. They're only at first base, but the reactions speak for themselves. Seriously, there's people having lunch here? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm in. Sorry. sorry. For us, in our human urban jungle, we're, um, we're much more circumspect about sex on show. And probably the main reason is to avoid attention and therefore to avoid conflict. At first sight, the primate mating game couldn't be simpler. For many species, when a female's ready to mate, these flesh swellings tell the male she's fertile. And when they see it, they know it's time for some monkey shenanigans. In baboons, the female's body weight will increase by about 14% when they've got a swelling of pigtail macaques, even 25%. So these are really big, conspicuous signals. A female ape's swelling is on her rump, in direct eye line of the male ape. Some scientists think that as we evolved to walk upright, women developed sexy swellings on their chest, so they're still in the human male's direct eye line. But unlike their ape cousin's swellings, these lady lumps are permanent. Even though we find these swellings so desirable, we've evolved from our ape cousins to become masters at disguising it. Or have we? To find out, we sent this attractive ape to an attractive shopping mall with her swellings on display and a secret camera stitched to her bra. Her mission? To see how many guys will try to sneak a peek at her beautiful beacons of fertility while engaged in innocent conversation. Would you check them out? Let's see if the guys at the mall can resist. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Yes, it's uh, half past 12. And do you know? First peak in under five seconds. Excuse me, do you know what time it is? Half past 12. Time and again, the guys can't resist Excuse feasting me, their eyes. If you think you'd do the same, don't feel too bad. It would seem the signals are strong, especially with the younger males. Guess how many times this young buck tries to chance a glance. Do you know the time? Yeah. Uh, time to walk. Do you work in advertising? No. Oh, I thought I knew As you. As soon as she turns away, he here. grabs an eye for where to eat. Do you know if this place is any good? Surely he won't risk another go. And there it is. I, two okay. in the bag. I, I mean, I kind of want, like, an egg sandwich. Egg sandwich. Is that the okay in that? You think so? If they don't have it... And the boys are on a roll. Like... There it is, number four. All in under 30 seconds. And to top it off, there's a bottom glance. 
It's socially unacceptable to stare at swellings. So unlike other apes, men struggle to ignore their primal response. We can clearly see that inner demand to take a peek. Let's go back and take another look at those fertile apes. Can you spot what they have in common? That's right, they've all got a male in tow. For most primates, it's the alpha of the group who gets the girl. And once she shows signs of being fertile, he sticks close by to make sure no one else gets their hands on her. It's called mate guarding, and it's serious business. See how this alpha chimp warns rivals to back off from this large-bottomed lady? His lips are more pronounced, and the hair on his body is more puffed out. He's made himself look large and impressive, a clear warning to keep away. The instinct to guard a mate is hardwired. But while most apes worry for only a few days a month when the female is looking fertile, for human beings, it's become a full-time job. So how would you react if there was a guy trying to steal your fertile-looking mate? We've rigged this spa with hidden cameras. Come in first, please. And invited lovebirds Sophia and Marco for a couple's massage. Sophia and Marco have just arrived. Sophia's in on the stunt. Her masseur is an actor named Patty. He's going to flirt with Sophia while her boyfriend's in the room. Do you want to call me up? Yeah, yeah. Will Marco rise to the challenge and guard his mate? Or will he roll over and yeah, be submissive? Yeah, you just want to lie down on your front. And if you just pop your head into the hole here. Let the massage begin. I, uh, sorry I'm late. You right, guys? Hello, you just want to pop your sorry, head in here? My kickboxing class overran it to show some of the new black belt students some extra takedowns. Right away, you can see the tension in Marco's face as he realizes another man will be touching his girlfriend, like a chimp grooming another chimp's female. Sophia, is it? Yes. Hi, I'm nice Paddy. Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, are you? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Where are you from? That's a nice accent you've got. I'm from Argentina. Oh, are you? It's a very passionate country, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I'm and like they that. say they're very beautiful girls. So. Definitely judging by you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> now you can see Marco's jaws are clenched and his nostrils are flared. Classic signs of ape aggression, as if he's preparing himself for a fight. You're really tense up here. Oh, my. Yeah. Must, must be something stressing you out. Marco is clearly getting worked up, but the problem is he's stuck lying in a subordinate position. And right now, he's desperate to be dominant. Yeah, yeah. Wow, your skin's so soft. Do you use anything? <laughs> uh, just moisturizer. Really? Yeah. That is incredible. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you talk too much for you do massage, you know? I'm just trying to... No, this is my girlfriend, but... Oh, man, I'm just trying to... Well, yeah, baby, you calm can down. just do the massage, you know? I'm just trying to do my job, baby, right? calm down. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. big deal. Do your job. Talk less, you know? I'm just talking to my client. Now Marco is locked in direct eye contact with the masseur. It's threatening, but without the use of physical force. Just like a chimp who does a big threatening bluff to try and make his opponent back down. It helps avoid getting injured in an actual fight. Wow. You went to relax with a massage, mate. That's I it. always try to get Marcus to give me a massage, but no. he doesn't want to. It's all right. I'll take care of you. Just, just yield right. into my hands. Yeah. That's it. Your body's absolutely beautiful. Look, before you go, I'll give him a personal card and then... If ever you want another one, you can just let me know. I mean, I do house calls as well, so if you're busy, I can always, always come to you. So I do that just for special customers. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not comfortable here. No? No. What's the crack in it? What's the matter, What's problem? What do you mean? This is my girl, you know? Now that is classic ape male guarding. He's lifted himself up to Patty's height, puffed himself up to look big, opened his arms and sprawled his legs, just like a chimp about to go into an aggressive display. <laughs> Good thing boyfriend Marco saw the funny side when we revealed the truth. But was your joke, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I thought you lasted a lot longer than I thought you would. 
So Marco's proven that, just like chimps, we're hardwired to defend our mates. There are plenty more laws of attraction we share with our ape cousins. Can you guess what incredible primate truth we'll unlock with the help of this terrible twosome? No way. We've already seen the effect that female swellings have on apes and how humans are no different. But it's not just the in-your-face bumps that we're programmed to find attractive. There are far more subtle female physical traits whose origins we share with our ape cousins. Here's a question for you. Which face do you find most attractive? If it's the one on the right, then you've shown you're more attracted to fertile females because that picture is a composite image of women ovulating. And in the one on the left, they aren't. When a woman ovulates, her skin subtly changes color to become more attractive to males, a physical trick that we share with our ape cousins. As they reach peak fertility, so the color of the skin changes, gets pinker and pinker and pinker until it's really very, very bright and is like a massive kind of banner to all the males to say, I am absolutely at my peak fertility. The human version of this is our fertile female's slightly rosier cheeks, clearer skin, and redder lips, all caused by a rise in estrogen levels. Dr. Miriam Law-Smith is an evolutionary psychologist. She's invited a group of men to demonstrate that just like apes, we can't help but be attracted to those subtle signs of fertility. So, take a seat here. So today you're gonna to be doing an experiment on attraction. Uh, so we're gonna be bringing men in. It's a straightforward experiment, looking at pairs of faces and deciding which they find more attractive. As predicted, all the guys find the fertile faces more attractive. But what the guys don't know is that we're actually measuring their reactions to something else. The lab assistant who is actually two identical twins pretending to be one person. One of them is ovulating and the other one isn't. They take turns coming in and checking the sweat and heart rate monitors hooked up to the guys. But the monitors are actually measuring their body's reactions to the girls. Let's see how this guy reacts to the ovulating twin. So you can see here, just as twin A's gone in, the ovulating twin, the GSR has shot right up. He's starting to sweat a little bit. He's got a bit physiologically aroused. Over here, you've got the heart rate. That's also gone up. His heart's beating faster. There's definitely another sign that he's slightly aroused. The ovulating twin leaves. <laughs> and once our subject's body is back to baseline level, we send in the non-ovulating twin. He doesn't notice it's a different woman. Okay, so the second twin's gone in. His galvanic skin response and his heart rate have gone up. But interestingly, not quite as much as when the first twin, the ovulating twin, went in. On average, the men's response to the ovulating twin is almost ten times greater than the non-ovulating twin, no matter which one went into the room first. You can see it's gone right up as soon as she walked in the door. The twins help demonstrate that human males, like male apes, are visually more attracted to women when they're fertile. But those ape swellings also produce an odor to help male chimps sniff out an ovulating female. Can humans do the same? To find out, we take our test one step further by bagging up the t-shirts the twins wore last night. Will our guys, like apes, be able to sniff out the fertile female? So I'd like you to have a smell of each of these. Right, okay. And tell me which one you find most attractive. Mm -hmm. Put your head in and have a, have a good whiff. Female body odor changes subtly during ovulation, so the t-shirts will okay. smell different. And to make it a fair test, either. neither twin has used any perfume or yeah. deodorant. Which one do you prefer? I prefer A. 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 Well, interestingly enough, actually, T-shirt A is worn by a lady who's currently ovulating. So you picked the lady who's fertile over the lady that isn't fertile. Okay. Okay? Cool. And I'd just like to bring in the lady who was wearing T-shirt A. Yay! Okay? 
And so she's currently ovulating. You preferred the smell of hers. And I'd like to bring in the lady who's wearing T-shirt B. No way. <laughs> <laughs> we found that in the T-shirt test, 100% of our men actually preferred the T-shirt worn by the ovulating twin, which is a fantastic result. We also found some really interesting results on the physiological data, so the heart rate and the sweat response, which is great. It really shows that they're slightly more attracted to that twin. So just like our eight cousins, we can't help but be attracted to fertile females. But can primates teach us anything about how to get the girl? Armed only with eight mating strategies, what chance do you give these guys of winning over this crowd? So what can the average ape teach you about getting a girl? Well, for starters, follow an ape's furry footsteps and learn how to make a good first impression. Our chimpanzee male cousins have it all figured out. When you're dominant, you get all the females you want and all the mating you want. So to catch a girl's eye, simply follow the rules of a successful male ape. And it's easy to spot him. Head held high and surrounded by others. But what makes him so successful? Number one is his confidence. See how he walks with a purpose? He also looks impressive with a beautifully groomed coat, thanks to all the attention he gets. And he holds a direct gaze when showing a female attention. Primatologist Isabel Benke Izquierdo has spent months in the wild studying ape behavior. She'll use her expertise to teach us what to and what not to do to achieve success in the world of human dating. In this experiment, we'll hopefully demonstrate that the same principles that underlie mate choice in our ape cousins in the jungle are at work in humans. Isabel has invited a gaggle of single women to a charity auction to bid on this group of hot young studs. You are the kind of male that every great ape female wants. Isabel teaches one half of the group the character traits of high-status male apes. First, in terms of body language, great apes are confident, are dominant. So it's very important that your shoulders are back, that you start comfortably, and very importantly, look at women's eyes. And this half of the group, character traits of low-status apes. You're submissive. You have a closed body position. You don't want to advertise yourself very much. There's also some signs that we use to tell when a great ape is stressed, which are called displacement activities. So self-scratching, for instance, or perhaps sometimes touch your face. If the rules of ape dating school are to be believed, then our four high-status apes should fetch the highest price at auction. It's time to release okay. the studs. Then can we get our hands together for these awesome guys? First up, our low-status boys, who are trained to display less desirable character traits. Aww. Look at this guy. With his head down, he's completely nailed the submissive chimp look. We have here a great ape who is a subordinate. He doesn't signal uh, confidence or dominance, assertiveness, so female primates in general will not go for this kind of great ape. Can I start bidding at one dollar? This guy might appear confident, but look closer. He's ungroomed and his hands show nervous displacement activity. Okay, sold! Well, there's an obvious flaw with this guy. His shirt is not bottomed properly, so that suggests lack of coordination, and that is not a desirable quality, given that if you have children with this person, they will probably inherit that. Look at our last low-ranking ape. He immediately puts his hands in his pockets, and like a nervous chimp, his eyes are darting around. <laughs> Can I start the bidding at one dollar? Five dollars. Oh, 
total bids for the less desirable apes add up to $28. Will our high-status apes get the girls spending? Check out this guy. Head held high, confident strut, and perfectly groomed. He's signaling genetic fitness, so he's probably very healthy. His coat, so to say, is perfect, so that's very attractive. Look at that. Confident entrance and owning his space. He should get the girls bidding. He's wearing glasses. He's wearing this kind of academic type attire, signaling big time intelligence. Intelligence is a trait that is universally liked by female great apes. Check out these intelligent chimps, breaking nuts using sticks as tools. Intelligence is a highly inheritable trait that's very attractive. Big smiles and groomed to perfection. Look how he's showing himself off to the girls. Female primates, they also go for the for personality traits. Being nice and openness are highly desirable qualities. So well this guy stands fully upright. Watch how he holds his gaze around the room. He's definitely a dominant ape. I think this guy's gonna do really well. <laughs> After all that frenzied bidding, our high-status apes make a grand total of $62, more than twice as much as our low-status apes. So, guys, there you have it. To make a good first impression on the ladies, simply follow our ape rules of attraction. Walk with confidence. Have a groomed appearance. Show off inheritable traits. Problem-solving, intelligence, and genetic fitness are all signs that show you're a male worth breeding with. But what if you're not naturally dominant and well-groomed? How can a less successful male attract a mate? Our primate cousins have another strategy. Female apes have a soft spot for one type of male in particular. Males who are kind and gentle to infants. In the ape world, the females are mainly left to bring up the offspring. But just look how this huge male carries off the baby chimp. At first, mom stays close by, slightly nervous of his intentions. But when the big burly male shows his play face, she quickly relaxes, clearly enjoying his nurturing soft side. In baboon society, often a new male, when he comes into the group, he will um, spend a lot of time playing with infants and grooming infants of a particular female to basically ingratiate himself with her. And for humans, it's not that different. We also find it very attractive when we see a man that's obviously got a nurturing side, has that protective streak, and um, is good with little children and, and fluffy animals. To demonstrate the effect of this nurturing side, we rigged this street with hidden cameras. Chris, who's not usually lucky with the ladies, is going to ask complete strangers to dig deep in his pocket and retrieve his car keys. First, he carries some rather heavy fruit. Then he'll have his arms full with cute puppies. Will what he's carrying have an effect on the way passersby respond to him? Watch how people react when he has the melons to worry about. Sorry, can you help me get my melons in there? In the car, sorry, can you... Sorry, can you just help me with my melons into the car? Sorry? No, it's a no-go. But now watch how differently people react when his hands are filled with those adorable puppies. Oh, you're licking my face. Stupid puppies. I'm just trying to get the puppies in, in the car. The keys in my, in my pocket is... is Right away, a complete stranger is willing to put her hand in Chris's pocket to retrieve his keys. I think my keys are in my pocket. By behaving in a nurturing, fatherly way towards the puppies, Chris finally gets female attention. I can try and get these two in. Um, <laughs> thank you very, very much for this. Thank you. <laughs> More women, 
more than happy to help. Any chance you just get the keys? Uh, you, yeah, should this be in my pocket? Yeah, yeah, really and they're even willing to go one step further and help him with his dog carriers, too. Oh, that's brilliant. Maybe one in the, uh, the back and one in the front. Those puppy dog eyes have got these strangers eating out of the palm of his hand. Because that one, it likes you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. So why did the women choose to help? This never happened to me before, but uh, he had, you know, a person had two puppies and couldn't put them on the ground, but gives you a safe uh, impression of a man, so I yeah. decided to help. You know what, a man holding a puppy like a baby is <laughs> very sweet. We don't need to look far to see that the strong nurturing type works just as well for human females as it does for apes. But why? Evolution has ensured that our young look adorable. Their big, wide-set eyes and large heads make them appear cute and appealing, and our primal response is to care for them. For women, a dominant male nurturing the young appeals to their primal instincts. It's the exact reason we always see politicians kissing babies on the campaign trail. So if you want to get into her heart, make like a caring chimp or a baby-loving bonobo and show off your nurturing side. But when the lights go down, you need different tactics. What happens when our primate actors hit the town? Can they find love the ape way? Oh my God! We've been looking at the laws of attraction you can borrow from our ape cousins to help you get the girl. We've seen how to sniff a potential mate and how to make the best first impression. Now it's time to get serious. You need to make the move. When it comes to charming the ladies, there's an ape who really stands out. Meet the bonobo. Along with chimpanzees, they're our closest living relative. Humans, chimpanzees, and bonobos share a common ancestor, a kind of evolutionary grandmother that lived seven million years ago. Humans and bonobos share 98% of the same genes, and they're one of the only non-human primates to regularly mate face-to-face -face for pleasure. At first sight, bonobos can be mistaken for chimpanzees, but they are distinguished by their middle-parted hair more slender build, and bright pink lips. The physical differences are nothing compared to their alternative approaches to social living and mate choice. Chimpanzees have a society which is hierarchical, male-dominated. They hunt, they use tools, and aggression is common. Bonobos, on the other hand, are female-dominated. Females form very strong bonds and coalitions, and they are very playful, tolerant, and cohesive. So, in a nutshell, it's like bonobos are the hippies of the jungle. They're kind of the make-love-not-war ape. But guys, which approach do you think will work best when it comes to making that move? A playful bonobo or a confident chimp? Our male actors are back and about to be let loose on this buzzing silent disco full of gorgeous single ladies. Their challenge, to get a girl's phone number. First, primatologist Isabel helps our guys channel their inner ape. To truly discover female preference, these two will be our bonobos and these two will be our chimps. Bonobos are hippies of the jungle. They are caring and they're playful. Your approach will be confident, but not over-dominant. Right? Ask about them, not just talk about yourself. It's very important that you consider them, that you invite them in the interaction. I, they have the choice. Today, I need you to embody the dating style that we're going to call chimpanzee, cool. right? <laughs> Chimpanzees are different in that they are male-dominated society and use aggression. So body language has to be overly confident, right? Don't use nice humor. You are assuming you will get the girl. It's not about allowing female choice. Watch out, ladies. Here come the apes. Our chimp moves straight in, full of confidence. Hey, you got great legs. What time are they open? Our 
chimps are coming on too strong. They're speaking at the girls. Let's go. Our chimp is approaching the girls very, kind of in an aggressive stance. I touching them without being invited to touch. So he's ignoring the fact that human females have choice over who they choose. So that's why it's not working. Your, your phone's charged, right? Yeah, why? You should probably call your mom and let her know you're not coming back tonight. That's a good wow. one. That was a good one. That one helped. Pick up line. We should dance. We should dance right now. Right now? Yeah. There's no female choice here. Our chimp is literally telling her what to do. She picks a different perfume. Okay. So did the chimps manage to get any cell numbers? Okay. Mind if I get your number? No, I'm good. That comes as no surprise. Hey, can I have your number anyways? No. No? Are you moving on to her so fast? You started out with me. Mind if I get your number? Sorry, no. Every time our in-your-face chimps get snubbed. Good luck. Clearly, our cheesy chaps are not attractive apes. Let's see how our bonobos do. Pardon me. What's your name? Ali. Ali? I'm Jeff. Hi. I'm Sasha. Kelly. Nice to meet you. What do you what do you do in, in life? I'm right. I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Nice to meet you. Where are you from? I'm uh, no. What do you actually do? A paralegal. Oh cool. Yeah. Do you like it? It's okay. Our charmers get a more positive response. Gotta go for a spin. Okay, this is great. They're dancing together. She's smiling. He has succeeded in making her laugh. So what kind of stuff do you write? Isolation and various forms because I lived in Iceland for three years. The only things I know how to say in Icelandic are like, ski to eat it. So this is interesting. He can speak Icelandic and she's very surprised. She laughed and then she touches her hair. So that could be an example of assortative mating, as in like, like searches like. And when it comes to getting those digits, it's a different story for the bonobos. If you give me your number, I'll give you a text from time. What's your name? Ali. Bingo. Our bonobo invested his time in the girl, and he gets the ultimate prize, her contact info. He was in a nutshell, nice, good looking, and fit. So female apes like, like that. And there you have it. When making your move, keep that full-on chimp locked deep away and let your inner fun-loving bonobo come out to play. This cocky monkey thinks he's the master of sweet talk, but can his charming chatter win over these ladies? You are very beautiful. Thanks to our ape cousins, you now know how to get a female's attention and make your move. Here's the tricky part. Winning her over. Even dominant chimps have to do a little legwork to keep their females sweet. This confident ape pampers his female with the grooming session, cementing their bond. Grooming is very important amongst primates as a way of basically cementing social relationships, forming close bonds, male uh, chimps and baboons will often groom females when they're trying to take them away on consortship. Basically, it's their way of kind of chatting off the female. We do that with compliments. Sharon, you're so beautiful! In humans, compliments really do kickstart arousal and make us more receptive to a potential mate. To prove it, we invited students to do some market research. Take a seat. We sat them in front of a thermal imaging camera. It registers the change in temperature of their faces. What they don't know is that our smooth-talking interviewer is going to bombard them with flattery. Uh, we're working in tandem with a local zoo, and we're Ooh. trying to... First, he lulls them into a false sense of security. Whether or not people would be interested in adopting zoo animals. Okay. What, if anything, would make you want to adopt a zoo animal? They're cute. Then, oh, surprises like them the with the first compliment. Threatened. Okay. Mm. You have very nice eyes. Thank you. <laughs> really nice. Thanks. <laughs> so, she certainly uh, wasn't expecting that. Was Time to go thermal and see if her temperature has increased. 
Immediately, it goes up from 93 to 94.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Clear sign she's becoming physiologically aroused. Do you have a boyfriend? No. 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 <laughs> I know once, man, forever That's good news. alone. That's good news. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. Um, another compliment and another increase okay. in temperature, up by another two degrees. You have very nice eyes, by the way. Oh, thanks. You do. Very nice. Our friendly Sorry. interviewer scores big with other students. I like your hair, by the way. Thanks. I like curly hair. Okay. The thermal image uh, camera showed really increased nice temperature you. after every compliment. Very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Especially with this girl. Actually, you are very beautiful. <laughs> you are. Thank you. Her temperature went up by a whopping five degrees. So compliments cause a physiological response. But look a little closer, and you can see that her body language alters too. And it's here that our inner ape is truly revealed. When this female is being groomed, she shows submissive behavior. Look here at her lowered head, averting the male's gaze. This says, I'm not a threat, and I'm receptive to your advances. So let's rewind our students. You have very nice eyes. Thank you. <laughs> really nice. Thanks. Sorry. Okay, well, not only has her temperature increased, but she looks down. Again, quite submissive, but friendly. Well, she's kind of like, I feel a little uncomfortable, but I want to be friends. It's not the only submissive behavior on display. Two chimps meet, basically. If one is slightly submissive, it grins slightly. That's a fear grin. That's actually saying I'm not a threat. And in the long term, that means I'm friendly. And so that little fear grin has gradually evolved into our smile. And we have all sorts of other little subtle gestures that basically say I'm not a threat and have now have the meaning that I'm actually being friendly, I'm being responsive to you. Actually, you are very beautiful. <laughs> you are. Thank you. There, she very clearly, after seeing that kind of physiological change, she also had the body language where she leans forward and then gives him this massive smile. Um, you know, obviously a very, very friendly gesture. So just like female apes, our students react with submissive gestures, signaling their interest and receptiveness to the interviewer's compliments. Yeah, I, I think I did blush, yeah. I probably blushed, yeah, when I received those compliments. It was quite cute. <laughs> yeah. The battle to woo a female heart isn't over yet. Who will win the ultimate Bonobo versus Chimp Challenge. When it comes to making the move, apes groom their potential mate, and humans complement each other. If we look deeper into the primate world, we can see the parallels of some of our more flirtatious behaviors. Watch how the female talk macaque flutters her eyelashes to show off her blue eyelids to subtly signal her romantic interest. And check out Jennifer Aniston on the red carpet with Gerard Butler. Fluttering eyelashes, submissive glances, and lingering gazes. We may have evolved to suppress the urge to mate in public, but there are some signs of attraction we just can't hide. Complimenting and flirtation are not the only things we use to attract a mate. Like our ape cousins, we also use food. For bonobos, their female-led society means the ladies get first pick of the food and choose who they mate with. Bonobo males have to sit and wait until the females invite them to join the fun. In the chimp world, it's males who allow females to sit and share their food, making it likelier she'll mate with them. boy. But they're often selfish and don't share, which is too bad, because female chimps mate twice as often with those who will share. Sound good? Let's put it to the test. Will generosity allow our date-hungry guys to seal the deal? In this experiment, we're setting up a speed dating scenario. We're going to assess female reactions to two very different types of male behavior. Ben is going to behave like a bonobo, showing signals of generosity. 
Charlie will act more like a selfish chimpanzee, completely ungenerous. They have just five minutes to impress their date. These might not appear huge, but they are signals, i.e. indications of future potential for investment and sharing of resources. Over to our chimp Charlie. Hi. I'm Charlie. I'm Courtney. Courtney. Nice to meet you. Can I get you guys anything to drink? Uh, uh Coke. Okay. Can I have a water? Sure. Thank you. Hmm. This is very interesting. He jumped to order first, i.e. he didn't defer to her. Um, in primate terms, this is equivalent to what male chimpanzees do in that they have priority access to food. So clearly she didn't like this and you can see kind of the gesture in the eyes. Can I get you guys anything to drink? Um, I have a, just a Coke. Coke? Yeah. I'll have a water. Thank you. Exactly the same happened in this case. Her lips become tight and kind of her stare more fixed. He immediately becomes a less attractive ape. Let's see how our bonobo, Ben, compares. Hi. Uh, sure. I can have the water, please? Sure. I'll have, a, I'll have a tonic water, please. Tonic water? Sure. Yeah, thanks. Immediately, we see that Ben is being more bonobo-like, if you want. He is being more open, more friendly. He's attentive to her. He waits for her to order. You can see the difference in her face. She's smiling, she's more open. There's not that rigidness that we just saw. And now, the ultimate test, sharing food. Come on, guys, be honest. How many of you have helped yourself before offering the girl? It didn't really, like... I mean, I guess it didn't really pan out super well, um, but, uh, you know, I work for a, I work for a uh, medical supply company. The first thing that happens is that Charlie pulls immediately the foot towards him. She looks downwards. She is not happy, and she drinks from her glass. This is a parallel to what great apes do called displacement behavior, a repetitive self-scratching, for example, that serves to appease stress, i.e. situations where an individual is at an ease. One of my best friends. Peace. Thank you. You, uh, you visit the other galleries often then, too? He's very explicitly offering the food to her, i.e. He, he's giving her priority access to food. This mirrors what happens in bonobo society, where females have priority access to food. She likes this trait of generous behavior because it signals the potential of investment, of caring in the long term. Good luck. Take it easy. Take care. Thank you. You too. It's obvious. Humans like chimps make initial assessments of potential mates in minutes. So lock that selfish inner chimp away and make like a generous bonobo where it's always ladies first. When it comes to sex, we private pair bonding humans are a far cry from our promiscuous exhibitionist ape cousins. But deep down, we are all still driven by the same primal urges. So remember, read the signs, however subtle. Show off your groomed, confident exterior and flaunt those inheritable traits. Be like a free-loving, generous bonobo. Please. And not a selfish, arrogant chimp. Because after all, we all want to find the perfect mate. <laughs>